The hyphenated compound exercise that you have to do this week mainly focuses on the compound adjective. We are going to discuss here the so-called attributive adjective, that is the adjective placed before a noun. When an adjective that is made up of more than one word is placed before the noun, there are two rules to follow. Number one, the words making up this compound adjective are in the singular form. Number two, they are hyphenated. You have certainly seen many compound adjectives in the course of your studies. The five-year-old girl lost her toy, in which the words five-year-old are bound together with a hyphen. And you can see that the word year is singular in this particular example. Now notice the following examples. The girl that lost her toy is five years old. The five-year-old girl lost her toy. The difference between the first and the second sentence is that the idea five years old is, in the first sentence, placed after the verb. It is not an adjective in front of a noun. In the second example, the five-year-old idea is placed before a noun. So, it plays the role of an adjective, a so-called compound adjective, and it modifies the noun which follows. And because the words five-year-old presents one idea, they have to be connected together with a hyphen, and because they play the role of an adjective, they cannot be plural. You most certainly know that adjectives, unlike French, do not have any plural form in English. The good books, the nice dresses. The adjectives good and nice do not take any S. They remain invariable. You know that. This explains why we say strawberry ice cream with strawberry in the singular form. Of course, to make strawberry ice cream, you need many strawberries. But we don't mean the noun here, but the adjective delicious ice cream, low-fat ice cream, expensive ice cream. These words delicious, low-fat, expensive are adjectives and they are invariable. The same applies to all adjectives, including strawberry ice cream. It is the same reason why we would have the following conversation. May I have an ice cream cone, please? Which flavor do you want? Strawberry, please. We would say strawberry and not strawberries because what we want is the adjective. It is the idea of strawberry ice cream that we have in mind and not strawberries placed separately beside the ice cream. Once this is clear to you, you need to remember that if the adjective is made up of more than one word, the words that compose this so-called compound adjective have to be hyphenated. Going back to our strawberry ice cream example, we could imagine having other flavors like peanut butter ice cream, blue mint ice cream, green tea ice cream, or sea salt caramel ice cream. If these flavors are made up of more than one word, they are hyphenated and singular. But we would say, I used to sell vanilla and chocolate ice cream. Vanilla and chocolate are not hyphenated because they are two different ideas. They are not one concept, but two. Vanilla and chocolate are two different things, not one singular idea, hence no hyphen. They remain obviously invariable or singular if you prefer. Our next thought is regarding the economy of speech. As a rule, People do not repeat the same ideas two or three times in the same sentence. We remove words for the sake of rapidity and in order not to sound boring. Let's illustrate it with an example. We don't say, my teacher arrived, my teacher sat down, my teacher looked at us, and my teacher made it clear that she was not happy. If you spoke like that, people would think your language skills are very poor. The regular way to express this idea is to cut what has been already mentioned. My teacher arrived, sat down, looked at us, and made it clear that she was not happy. We always do that when we speak and when we write. 
In fact, cutting parts of a sentence to avoid repeating an idea that has just been stated is the norm and is considered good style. We can do that with compound adjectives too. Instead of saying, turning a 35-hour week into a 30-hour week is a great improvement, you could simply say, turning a 35 into a 30-hour week is a great improvement. The rule of cutting words that should not be repeated twice applies to compound adjectives. But notice here what happened. We kept the last hyphen of the compound adjective. So when we have to choose between a 5D working week or a 4D working week, the choice is easy. But if we cut the sentence, it gives us the choice between a 5 or a 4 day working week. For your information, such a compound that is cut and left hanging with a hyphen at its end, waiting to be completed in the next compound, is called a suspended compound. With this explanation in mind, you are now ready to practice this rule with an exercise. I wish you good luck and try not to take too long to do this 12 number exercise. Uh, or was it the 10 number exercise? Whatever. Good luck doing this 10 to 12 number exercise. I am sure you'll do a good job.